Hello everybody, how's it going? This is Prodigious Mind. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about what is hashing, what is it used for, how can we compute hashes of files and plain text, what is hash cracking and rebootable attack, how it is done with a demonstration, how we can prevent hashes from rebootable attack, what is salting, what's the use of salting, etc. In few words, pretty much everything about hashing and salting theoretically and with a practical demonstration. But before moving any further, make sure to subscribe this channel and turn the notification on by clicking the bell icon. So alright, let's just get started. If you guys don't know about the differences between encryption, encoding and hashing, I would suggest you to watch my other video. You can click the i button or use the link from the description box to watch it. Timestamps and other resources shared in this video can also be found in the description box below. So what is hashing? Hashing is a very important concept in cryptography and it has two main usage. First is for storing sensitive information in databases or files such as user passwords and the other one is to check the accidental changes within a file. For example, when a user sign up on an application such as social media sites, the password of the user and other sensitive information are stored in form of hashes instead of plain text in a database. This is done to prevent data theft and securing user account if some unfavorable event takes place. When a user try to sign in, the application first compute the hash of the user type password mostly at the back end of the application and then try to identify the identity of the user by matching the hash values, i.e. the password user submitted in login form and the one already stored in the database, which the user submitted at the time of registering the account or after changing the password. If both password matches, the application then authenticates the user and responds with a session ID or session cookie, which then gets saved in user's web browser. So the user can seamlessly access different web pages of the same application without typing his her password again and again. As we discussed earlier that the other main use of hashing is to check the accidental or any kind of changes within a file. Uh, the way it's done is, let's suppose we have this file named some file.xyz. We can see the content of this file on the screen. Let's compute the hash of this file in different algorithms using a tool written in PHP. You can also download this script from the GitHub. The link for this is also in the description box below. Now, as you can see, we have calculated hashes of this file in several algorithms such as MD2, MD5, SHA256, SHA512, etc. etc. Let's focus on SHA512 or MD5. Now let's do some changes with this file. Here the changes can be any type of manipulation with the file such as insertion of words, characters or removal of characters. Just for the sake of example, let's add some random characters in this file. Now as we can see the content is mostly the same as we had before changing the file with some extra characters. But if we will try to compute the hash of this newly updated file, the hash will be different for it. This is why hashing is used for checking changes in a file or ensuring integrity of a file. One more important thing about hashing is that it is a one-way function, which means we can compute hash values of a plain text, but the vice versa is not true. In simple words, hashes can be calculated of a plain text, but the plain text cannot be calculated using the computed hash value. Just think of it as there is only encryption possible, but no decryption. Also, unlike encryption and decryption, there is no key required for the hashing process. A hash function does not require a key to calculate the hash value, it only requires plain text. You must have noticed somewhere that when you download files from websites, some application shows the checksum of the file as shown in this example, which is nothing but a hash of the original file that vendors provide. It is provided on the downloading page so a user can compute the hash of the file after downloading and try to check the authenticity or ensure the integrity of the file, which in simple words mean to determine whether this file is in original form or it has been manipulated in the middle of the downloading process. The changes can be occurred while a user is downloading the file and some attacker injected some malicious content in it 
or it can also be a kind of change that vendor mistakenly added some stuff and forgot to update the checksum. Please note the hash of a file does not tell whether a file is malicious or not, it only tells whether a file is changed or not, or is it authentic or not. Now let's discuss about hash cracking. We know that hashing is a one-way function unlike encryption and encoding, which means we can calculate hash of some plain text but we cannot compute plain text from a hash value. Now the question arises how does then hash cracking works? Rainbow table attack is a hash cracking method by which an attacker determines the plain text of a hash value. In order to understand this attack, let's have an example. Let's suppose there is a database in which there are thousands or millions of computed hash values of user plain text passwords. This database has been compromised and the attacker is not able to gather the plain text password as we already know that secure way of storing sensitive information such as passwords is not in plain text form but in hash values. In this situation, what attackers do is that they create a file having passwords in plain text values, then the attacker computes the hash values of each password. After computing the hash values, the output is then saved inside a file with some specific format which contains hash and their plain text values pair. This file is known as rainbow table. A rainbow table can be downloaded or created like we are going to do in a bit. The attacker then finds the matched hash values between this rainbow table and the hash values is stored in the compromised database. As we discussed earlier that hashes cannot be used to compute plain text but we can still find the plain text of a hash value by comparing the two values as hash of a plain text is always unique in a specific algorithm. There are several algorithms which is used for hashing as you can also see in the help usage of this tool. Now let's create a rainbow table of this file which contains thousand passwords in plain text format. We have a file for the sake of understanding, let's think of this file as compromised database which contains hashes of users' passwords. Now execute this command. The first part means that we are looping through each line or each password in the plain text file and in the next part of the command we are executing naughty.php to compute the hash value of it and in the last part of the command we are saving the computed hash values output in a file named rainbow table. So we have created a rainbow table. Now let's perform rainbow table attack by executing this simple command. We are using grab tool. It is very famous tool which is used for filtering and finding keywords or can also be used with rejects expression. What we are doing in this command is that we are trying to find the common hash values between rainbow table file and the compromised database. Since rainbow table file already contains the plain text and hash value pairs, we can find the plain text of the matched value. Using this command we performed a rainbow table attack and were able to crack 4 hash values. So this is how rainbow table attack works. In real life scenario a rainbow table attack can contains millions of already computed hash values and plain text pairs but for the sake of simplicity we use this basic and simple idea. I hope we have no issues in understanding things that we have discussed so far. Now let's discuss about the prevention of rainbow table attack. We know that a unique plain text always gives a unique hash value, which means plain text values cannot give a same hash value in common scenarios. However, there may be a situation where two different plain text can have a same hash value, which is a very very rare case. When this happens, we call it hash collision. It is a different topic and out of the scope of this tutorial. We will discuss about hash collision in upcoming videos. I don't want to confuse you now, just for the sake of understanding, know that different plain text have different hash values. 
in a specific hashing algorithm. Solving is totally based on this concept. If you know about encryption and decryption, we know that a secret key is used for encryption and decryption process, using which we encrypt a plain text and then transform it into ciphertext. We can also decrypt the ciphertext into its plain text using a secret key which can be same or different based upon the type of encryption that is symmetric or asymmetric encryption. You can think of salting as kind of a key concept in hashing. The stronger or random assault is, the more better result we will have and more complex it will be for an attacker to crack the hash value. Assault is just a secret word or character which is only known to the application performing the hashing functionality at the back end of the application. This secret word can be appended at the beginning, middle or at the end of a plain text. When an application is implemented to use salting mechanism, it should know where a salt should be added to calculate the correct hash value so there will be desirable result at the time of authenticating a user by matching two hash values. To make salting more powerful in terms of preventing hash cracking is that it is better to use different salt values of different users. It can be done by adding a secret key, a salt with something different among users such as their birth date. This way, even if an attacker manages to crack hash of a user, then if another user uses same password, his or her password can still be prevented from being revealed. Let's see how we can use salting user our naughty.php tool. This tool supports salting in two ways. We can either append the salt at the beginning or at the end of the plain text or even at both places. Let's create a rainbow table again of the same file we used before, but this time we are going to use salting technique. As you can see, since uh, the plain text is now different, that's why we got different hash values. For us, the salt value and the plain text is two different parts, but for the application, the whole value is taken as one plain text. The computed hash value is the hash of this whole plain text as if it was the password of the user. Since we use salting, which is a secret word only known to the application, the attacker on the other side won't be able to crack the hash as when he will perform the rainbow table attack, he will get the hash values of plain text without the salt values. So this is how salting works and can be used for preventing rainbow table and such hash cracking attacks. Let's discuss some secure practices for storing passwords. Always store sensitive information of users such as passwords or credit card information in hash values rather in raw plain text format. As we have seen how useful and important salting can be when it comes to preventing hash cracking attacks such as rainbow table attacks so implementing salting mechanism is always a good way in terms of security that's all for today's video i hope that you have learned something new from this and you have enjoyed it if yes then please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for getting more educational content on programming and cyber security in future we'll meet you again with another informational video till then take care and goodbye